Friends will start putting the IQ. They start putting up for because of temperature. Here it is 23. Here is 25.6. Here is 26. So temperature is rising. So the wind will start looking at. Why? It will get heat, become light, and move up. Just like that. Here is 24 degrees. Here is 25. Here is 26. The air will go. So in this area, the air will not see. Wind will not reach, not air. The wind will not reach. So this area will be the area of the. But generally, this area is not the westerly. 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 Equatorial westerly moves in this region. But the heat is very slow. Very slow. Very slow. Yeah. Come. Because air is rising. Look. Here is low pressure. Low pressure is created due to high temperature. And high temperature means the, uh, the air pressure will be low. So when air pressure will be low, then what will happen? Unstable weather conditions. So air is rising. Cloud formation is taking place. So the air, huge amount of air will go. हाँ फंस जाता है ना आप So it is a zone of calm because two, con two air means the air from subtropical region is converging but not reaching to the equator region. It is not reaching to the equator and before reaching here it is rising upward because of high temperature. So this zone, this area will be the area of calm, okay, the area of calm because no vertical, no horizontal movement of taking air is taking place. Here, air is moving vertically. So this is this area is called ITCZ and ITCZ is a zone of calm. Yes. Yes, yes. Water scarcity is look. Water scarcity means, means what? Huge amount of water is present. Water is you know, on this earth, 71% okay, area is covered with water. But water scarcity implies lack of water for drinking. Plenty of water is available. But still the country and the area is facing facing water scarcity and this is due to only because of what means contaminated water is there water is polluted and water pollution is only because of human interference so water scarcity means scarcity of fresh water the water which can be used for drinking and other purposes yes Look, entire <coughs> uh, that uh, urban centers, this is the case of urban center. And especially apart from urban center, the Punjab and uh, Haryana, the groundwater level is depleting as a very fast rate, at a very fast rate. Urban center, in urban centers, every housing society has what? Pump, uh, electrically uh, driven pumps, okay, to get the groundwater okay so we are using the groundwater but at the same time when water rainwater that should be going inside uh, that surface that is blocked due to the concrete structure we have means a sponge area a sponge area or the loose soil is generally not found in the urban centers because we have covered them with cement concrete structure we have we have erected in punjab and haryana the
the farmers are cultivating rice paddy okay paddy so what they are doing and we all know uh, while uh, that uh, in uh, the production of paddy flood irrigation is required amount of water is the requirement of water is more so what they do they extract exploit the ground water to get more productivity so there are lot of reason first of all ground water is exploiting uh, is uh, we are exploiting the ground water second is plenty of water is available for use but we have contaminated the water that's why the world is facing and by it is uh, it is said that by 2025 india is going to face water crisis and large number of cities of india like chennai where chennai exp uh, where water express train is uh, we uh, transport water through trains in in this year delhi witnessed water crisis water was not supplied to the house uh, in the areas in the main areas of delhi and water level had reduced the water level of uh, that yamuna has reduced tremendously and because of that we have faced a water problem in delhi it is the future of kya hai now in uh, in some years our centers urban centers will definitely going to face water crisis solution is what first of all we have to increase the ground water level first is what judicious use of water still we are not using water judiciously just i am giving example in that uh, flower pot we used to uh, the put water till the water is coming out from the pot okay we use that water to wash our that potable water means the water which can be used for our drinking purpose or like that uska use kahan karte hain hum log for to clean our house or gaadis or like that so first of all we have to accept that it is a resource but there is a limited limited in sense we have contaminated so we have to use judiciously the first thing that so the awareness is very important second thing is there is a need to install water harvesting system okay in every building to collect and by collecting and recharging to recharge the ground water third is there is a need to increase the ground water level of the urban centers especially urban areas and for that a sponge city a sponge a sponge gardens डेवलप ये करना पड़ेगा ओके वी हैव टू यूज द माइक्रो क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशन फॉर एग्रीकल्चर ओके वी हैव टू कल्टिवेट दो क्रॉप विच आर फिट इन द क्लाइमेटिक रीजन ऑफ दैट प्लेस तो स्ट्रिक्टली वी हैव टू अप्लाई दिस थिंग्स first of all judicious use of water and for that awareness is the most important thing still we indians are not using water judiciously in a plan of government is also responsible behind that for example in delhi okay free water so whenever you are started getting things in free so people started wasting that resource okay second thing is what the technology we have means water harvesting technique should be implemented and this should be not only implemented in practical way but for students it is it must be incorporated in the books how to conserve how to protect water conserve water third is third thing is what we have to use biotechnology and other technology to 
develop those seeds which are which are less in which less amount of water is required for the growth and development ye sab karna padega we have to develop a sponge garden in the urban centers to increase the ground water level there must be restriction for the use of ground water and high penalty should be imposed yes because still we have not faced the problem still water is available we are facing problem but only for a short period of time for example in delhi we have faced problem for 10 or 20 days and after the that problem of problem is over we are not talking about the water scarcity so the question is what the question is is still we have plenty of water water we have and this is the reason still we have not made any programs yes there is lot of programs we have made in the past but not there is no any law behind that program yes we must execute this plan uh with uh, by making laws ye bahut sare reasons hai okay and now yesterday uh, and uh, day before yesterday uh, there is a word frequently used and that is color revolution color revolution yes color revolution this is very important topic for your mains examination and in uh, sco meeting shanghai cooperation meeting jinping the press premier of um, china and uh, putin the premier of russia okay they use this term frequently this uh, color revolution and these revolution are threatening different part of the world so you all have to prepare this topic color revolution means what in the recent past we have seen that the powerful nation try to destabilize those nations which are considered as their enemies for example at presently america is interfering in the central europe and because of that we have seen the ukraine was invaded by russia now in the eastern uh, asia taiwan is supported by and whatever what is happening in the taiwan region we all are aware about that okay and supporting talib uh, taiwan means direct confrontation with china so this is what color revolution toppling the enemies or control the enemies and how to control the enemies those who are in power and those who are controlling the enemies power or enemies countries just kya karna unko topple them and pro american government or pro the go the government who want to topple the government okay kya karna establish those government so that is color revolution so in sco meeting Jinping Singh Jinping the president of premier of uh, China he is concerned over this revolution and these revolutions are used by basically american america to topple those government which are not pro us so this is a new term karna padega isko aap isko dekh lo isko water scarcity definitely water scarcity then uh, virtual water okay virtual water is also very important topic for examination look topics now inflation like we are facing inflation 
so the inflation is also and every after two or three days we are getting uh, that uh, articles on inflation india's foreign policies okay india's purchasing of oil from uh, that uh, ukraine uh, russia okay india banned the export of wheat in the world market okay so these are the topics why the price of oil is increasing in the world market so these are the topics which always a uh, very that uh, the topic from which the upsc has always asked question pucha hi hai wahan se okay so let's start so today i am going to discuss the topic of geomorphic process geomorphic processes okay generally this topic is important for our pre examination okay not for mains but uh, the word we will use in these geomorphic processes that are important for your pre examination okay look geomorphic process the word geomorphic has been formed from two words geo plus morphic okay and there is another word called processes geo means what we all know it is about the earth morphic means this sp a specified shape or form okay a specified shape or form okay geo means earth and morphic means a specified shape or form and processes means what the forces the forces which are responsible behind which are responsible behind shaping the which are responsible behind the this morphic processes shaping the earth okay so this is the topic we are going to discuss geomorphic geo means earth morphic means a specified shape and form and processes means what the forces which are shaping the earth because we all know the earth has mountains the earth has plateaus the earth has depressed part like ocean okay there is always on this earth surface there is a weathering erosion deposition processes all these processes takes place and because of that the shape of earth is continuously means there is changing in the shape of earth okay so that is called the geomorphic processes now look here this is earth and this is atmosphere of the earth okay our earth is a very dynamic planet okay our earth is <clears throat> okay and the crustal part this is the part of earth crust means the upper part of the earth okay the crustal part of the earth is very dynamic it is very dynamic dynamic means what it is not static okay and the different type of forces are changing the crustal part of the earth okay the earth surface or the crustal part is dynamic and it is continuously it has moved and moves or it is moving the surface crustal part is in the form of plates okay it has moved in the past it is moving in the present so this part the crustal part is very dynamic it has moved and moves horizontally over asthenosphere okay and now on this crustal part two type of forces are acting okay two type of forces are the one is generating from within the earth एक कहा से जन्म लेता है फ्रॉम इनसाइड अर्थ ओके 
from inside earth and these forces are called endogenic force endogenic force forces okay endogenic endogenic force or endogenic forces these forces are responsible behind responsible behind the creation of different type of landforms over earth surface mountain building plateau formation plain formation all these are because of this endogenic forces okay and another type of force which is acting on the crust is coming from the atmosphere and that is called exogenic exogenic forces like wind okay moving water okay so these are exogenic forces so our earth crust is witnessing two type of force endogenic forces or endogenic force and exogenic force and because of these two forces the crustal part of earth is getting affected and different type of different type of formation takes place on this okay different different type of formations are taking place on the crustal part so this entire process is called geomorphic processes so geomorphic process is simply the process which includes endogenic forces or processes because processes means what processes means the force which are acting on the crustal part because geo means what earth morphic means the specified shape and the processes means forces okay so our crustal part is witnessing two type of force one is generating from inside the earth okay this is called endogenic forces endogenic force and another is from atmosphere so these two forces are collectively working on where on the crustal part and because of that because of these forces the shape of the crustal part is continuously changing so this entire process is called zeomorphic processes okay now look here now so endogenic forces are generated from inside earth but what is the source what is the source of this endogenic force the first is radioactivities the first is what radioactivity okay what is radioactivity look radioactive elements those elements whose atomic number is 83 or more than 83 those elements whose atomic number is how much 83 or more than 83 the nucleus of these elements are highly unstable and to get stability they emits alpha beta and gamma rays alpha beta and gamma rays and during this process they emits huge amount of energy and that energy is responsible behind the creation of a layer called asthenosphere which is present in the upper mantle we have discussed in kahan padhe hum log when we have discussed the interior of the earth okay so radioactive activity is the main is one of the source of endogenic force apart from that rotation of earth rotation of earth is also responsible behind okay now second is exogenic force exogenic force is the force whose driving power is sun driving power is sun because we all know that the sun emits energy in the form of short waves which is known as solar radiation and the amount of solar radiation which are received by us is called insulation earth 
is getting earth is continuously getting energy from sun in the form of short wave okay okay this is called solar radiation solar radiation and the part of solar radiation which is received by earth which is received by earth by received by per unit area of earth is termed as insulation so this sun is the ultimate source of energy and because of this sun what is happening the movement of wind is taking place water is moving okay cloud formation because of evaporation so everything rainfall okay that uh, <coughs> uh, cloud, rainfall cloud formation movement of horizontal movement of wind rising convection current of wind okay the movement of uh, that uh, oceanic water okay all these are taking place because of exogenetic forces okay so the source of exo exogenetic forces ultimate is sun but what is the source of endogenetic forces the first is radioactivity second is rotation of earth and some tidal force is also responsible and because of these two forces what is happening the crustal part is continuously changing continuously in the sense ki nahi roz roz nahi hota hai it take time okay and that entire process is called geomorphic process okay so geomorphic processes in includes endogenetic and exogenetic forces and both these forces are acting on crustal okay part of the earth and because of these forces our crustal part is changing okay and this entire change is called is the part of which process is geomorphic process okay so write down the first point what is geo and uh, you all have written this or not geo means what geo is earth morphic means what morphic means the specified specified shape of shape or form okay and the third is processes processes means processes means what the force so first of all write these three lines okay now first point the earth crust is dynamic is dynamic okay dynamic it has moved it has moved and moves vertically and horizontally vertically and horizontally okay <clears throat> next point two forces are responsible behind behind the vertical and horizontal movement of movement of crustal part okay in other words two forces are acting two forces are acting on the crustal part of the earth okay two forces are so the forces which are acting on earth surface is first is internal force internal force okay internal force is also known as endo 
genic force the force which are coming from interior of the earth and second is external force external forces the forces which are coming from atmosphere external force is called exogenetic exogenic force okay and this force is coming from atmosphere okay now so what is endogenic force the force which is coming from inside earth now this force are responsible behind the building of crustal part okay this force is responsible behind the building up of crustal part okay built up the crust okay building of the crustal part now what is the this force is is responsible behind the building and what is the purpose of this force what this force do on earth these forces are responsible behind weathering erosion transportation of disintegration of rocks okay that is called weathering second is erosion means transportation of disintegrated rock and third is deposition of okay so external forces are responsible behind write down responsible external forces are responsible for weathering weathering means weathering means breaking disintegration of okay disintegration of disintegration and decomposition look right here okay disintegration of disintegration integration and decomposition of decomposition of rocks decomposition of rocks where at in situ in situ in situ means what suppose this is the area rock is here and this rock is disintegrated and decomposed and the material we will got we will get kya milega humko chote chote tukde milenge and this disintegrated part has deposited in the area where rock is found that is called weathering okay second is erosion second is erosion erosion means what when this disintegrated part is transported by the wind water moving water glacier etc that is called erosion and third is deposition okay whenever the low lying area will found okay the disintegrated part will deposit okay so internal forces are responsible behind building of crustal part and the external or in exogenic forces are responsible behind behind weathering erosion transportation and deposition so write down are responsible for wearing down wearing down of relief and filling up low lying area wearing down of wearing down of kisko wearing down of relief and filling of low lying area by the process of by the process of weathering second erosion third is transportation and fourth is deposition i hope it is clear to all of you 
so <coughs> two type of forces are acting continuously on crustal part the first is endogenic or endogenic force endogenic force are originating from inside earth and responsible behind the building of crustal part okay in the form of mountains in the form of plateaus in the form of other structure relief features so endogenic forces are crustal building force okay now exogenic forces are coming from atmosphere acting on the relief features formed by endogenic force on the crustal part and what they do they disintegrate the relief features okay kya kar deta hai relief features ko tod marod deta hai aur fir kya kar deta hai filled up the low lying area so this is endogenic force are building force crustal building force and this external force is what it is wearing down force kya karta hai tod fod karta hai na so this force is what external force is is land bearing uh, land it is land ko kya karta hai todta hai disintegrating force okay so lie down it is a land bearing forces land bearing bearing forces land wearing w e a r i n g is it clear so two type of forces now these two type of forces are acting and changing the crustal part so the entire process is called geomorphic processes okay so write down the endogenic the endogenic and exogenic forces forces causing physical stress causing physical stress and chemical action chemical action on the earth material and bringing about and bringing about bringing about changes in bringing about changes in configuration of configuration of the surface of earth full stop the entire processes which are responsible behind the changes in the earth surface are termed as geomorphic processes geomorphic processes okay now tell me what is which are the two forces acting on earth surface endogenic and exogenic what is the source of exogenic exogenic force atmosphere it is coming from atmosphere and the source is sun okay and exogenic forces are responsible behind wearing down of relief features wearing down of relief features and filling of filling of which part low lying areas endogenic forces are coming from inside earth and it are responsible behind 
the building of relief features on the earth relief features like mountain building processes okay plateau building submergence of land area submergence emergence of land part so these all are because of endogenic exam earthquake <coughs> volcanoes these are the forces which are coming from the inside earth and causes different type of structure on the earth okay any doubt now we will discuss every forces separately and their action on earth surface okay so first is endogenic endogenic forces endogenic force endogenic forces or processes we all know the definition of endogenic force endogenic force the force which are coming from interior of the earth is it clear now next point you will have to write the endogenic endogenic or endogenic forces are caused due to energy coming from energy coming from inside earth inside earth energy and the source of energies are kya kya hai three thing is very important first is radioactivity second is second is rotation of the earth rotational and the third is tidal friction okay so the three forces this energy is coming out because of three reasons radioactivity and this is the question of upsc this is the question of upsc what is the source of endogenic forces the source is the energy which is coming from inside and this energies are liberating due to due to radioactivity radio activity second is what yes rotation of rotational rotation and the third is tidal friction tidal friction theek hai so write down endogenic forces are originating from from the energies the energies which is coming out from interior of the earth interior of the earth by the process of by which processes by the process of radioactivity okay rotational and tidal friction rotational and tidal friction okay full stop apart from apart from this apart from this primordial heat primordial heat pre modial heat is also responsible is also responsible behind responsible behind the internal energy which causing endogenic forces primordial heat okay what is now the question is what is primordial heat we have discussed in the uh, when uh, we were doing internal structure of earth 
look we all know the earth was initially a hot ball ball of molten material theek hai and it was continuously cooling and the first what happened the upper layer was upper layer of the first was cooled firstly okay so when earth was cooling and different layers were forming some amount of heat was trapped inside the earth and failed to come out failed to come out that heat is called primordial heat okay primordial heat is what primordial heat is nothing but the heat which was generated during the time of cooling and solidification of earth okay jab earth kya ho raha tha thanda ho raha tha cooling process was taking place and solidification of earth. cooling and solidification of earth was taking place some amount of heat was trapped inside earth and that heat is called primordial heat usi ko kya kehte hain hum log primordial heat ka this heat is trapped where outer core this heat is trapped in the outer core and this heat is continuously coming out through 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 mantle plume mantle plume we have discussed in the class okay this is what the crystal part and here is this is mantle this part is mantle this part is core this part is outer core okay this part is outer core and it is not in solid form it is in liquid form and what is the reason behind liquidity of this uh, core is primordial heat primordial heat now some heat because this heat will melt the interior of the earth now so from core mantle boundary from core mantle boundary heated material rises when it reaches to the interior part when it reaches to the lower portion of crust it will spread like a mushroom or uh, umbrella and it started kya karta hai started melting the crust and whenever it gets success in melting the rock it comes out in the form of volcanic eruption okay this is called mental plume mental plume and this is called hot spot and responsible behind hot spot volcano hot spot volcano hot spot volcanoes are basically a fissure type of volcanoes formed when hot spot are static they generally they found in a place and suppose any plate is moving over hot spot then what will happen when it come to the when it moves to the over this hot spot if the crustal part is is a uh, weak then what will happen the hot spot will melt and volcanic eruption will takes place so such type of volcanism is called hot spot volcanic eruption okay this is what this is peninsular india here in the maharashtra region here is the malwa plateau region and this is the kathiawar plateau region all these volcanic eruption are associated with reunion hot spot re union hot spot 
so hot spot are nothing but hot molten material rising from core mantle boundary reaches to the lower part of the crust spread and start melting because temperature is very high so start melting the crustal part and whenever they got success in melting the crustal part they comes out on the surface of earth in the form of volcanic eruption so this hot molten part is called hot spot okay and responsible behind volcanism which is known as hot hot spot volcano and volcano is a force which is coming from inside and responsible behind the formation of volcanic area or plate you lava plate you so three type of forces are responsible behind the generation of energy inside earth okay endogenetic forces are the forces which are generated due to the energy release from inside earth and the energy are released due to three processes three or four processes the first is what the first is radioactivity but radioactivity is confined only in the where only in the this is crustal part this is mantle part only here in the asthenosphere part this is asthenosphere asthenosphere it is a semi liquid semi liquid part with a temperature of 1300 degrees celsius okay found between at the depth of 100 km to 300 km okay it is also known as magma chamber kya kehte hain isko hum log magma chamber bhi kehte hain and uh, during volcanic eruption okay this asthenosphere feed volcano so this is the source and this is formed due to radioactive elements radio active elements but outer ment outer core is in liquid form it is because of primordial heat what is primordial heat the heat which is trapped inside earth this part is asthenosphere it is in semi solid form okay and what is the reason behind its uh, semi liquid form is radioactive elements disintegration of radioactive elements theek hai na so do cheeze yaad rakhni hai the internal or endogenic forces are the forces which are originated due to the release of energy from inside earth and this energy is coming from first is radioactive elements second is rotational and tidal friction and third is primordial heat which are stored inside earth and these energies responsible behind the origin of endogenetic forces which are responsible behind the building of crustal part any doubt theek hai now <coughs> look these endogenetic forces endo genic or endogenetic force endogenic forces are responsible behind two type of movement two types of movement of earth surface okay first is horizontal movement horizontal movement and the second is vertical movement okay 
सो एंडोजेटिक फोर्सेस और एंडोजेनिक फोर्सेस आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहाइंड मूवमेंट इन द क्रस्टल पार्ट नाउ कैन यू गिव एग्जाम्पल ऑफ हॉर्जेंटल मूवमेंट और वर्टिकल मूवमेंट यस प्लेट मूवमेंट इज वर्टिकल हॉर्जेंटल मूवमेंट एंड बिकॉज ऑफ प्लेट मूवमेंट वॉट हैपन्स tell me how himalaya has been formed yes what is the theory involved plate tectonic according to plate tectonic theory there was a geosyncline okay so geosyncline so horizontal movement are always responsible behind either cracking because suppose the force is this is horizontal force and horizontal force can be a stress force a stressing suppose i am stretching this so what will happen it will crack will develop and second is when compressional force first is horizontal force can be of two types tensional force when tension will apply on anything so what will happen the folding will takes place okay sorry cracks tensile force will apply means what if this is a pen and i am applying horizontally force which is tensile force so it will crack down here okay and suppose the force which is compressional then what will happen is pe kya ho jayega fold will form okay so horizontal movement and second is vertical movement okay now can you give example of vertical movement of crustal part what how mountain is a vertical movement look 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 don't be don't confuse look here yes i want answer because this is very important thing look suppose this is a landmass and this is horizontal force we are applying so this is called tensile force tensional force and what will happen cracks will develop is it okay cracks will develop that will lead to the formation of fold and other things drift valley and ramp valley etc now so this is what tensional force okay it is a horizontal force okay now second is what the second is compressional force compressional force here is what this is geosyncline okay this is geosyncline and in this what happened the sediments got filled in this geosyncline now so when compressional force was applied then what happened because of this compressional force compressional force horizontal force is applying and horizontal force is responsible behind fold mountain so mountain will form by horizontal force not by the vertical force now give example of vertical force we have discussed about that yes okay western ghat or western coastal plain western coastal plain and eastern coastal plain now what is the difference yes this is what submergence so this is what vertical downward movement submergence the part of coastal plain which has submerged and this part is emergent part getting my points or not so this is because of vertical forces vertical movement horizontal movement will always responsible behind the creation of mountains and vertical will be responsible for 
सबमर्जेंस और इमरजेंस ऑफ लैंड क्रस्टल पार्ट ठीक है सो राइट डाउन सो फोर्सेस वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द एनर्जी वी आर गेटिंग फ्रॉम द इंडोजेंटिक फोर्सेस आर जनरेटेड ड्यू टू एनर्जी रिलीज बाय रिलीज फ्रॉम इनसाइड अर्थ ड्यू टू द प्रोसेसेस ऑफ चार पांच चीजें लिखाई थी मैंने कौन कौन से रेडियो एक्टिविटी सेकेंड इज रोटेशनल एंड ट्राइडल फ्रिक्शन एंड द थर्ड इज वट प्री मॉडियल हीट एंड गो एंड सॉल्व द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन आपको ये सारे चीज मिलेंगे एंड दिस इज ओनली फ्रॉम दिस इज यू विल गेट इन एनसीआर टीज एंड यूपीएससी इज आस्ट क्वेश्चन इन प्रिलिमिनरी एग्जामिनेशन वट इज द सोर्स ऑफ एक्सोजेनेटिक पावर एक्सोजेनेटिक फोर्स इट इज सन because of sun wind is moving water is moving everything is taking place what is the source of endogenic force the sources are teen char cheez jo maine likha diya okay now write down next point endogenic forces causes endogenic forces causes cause two types of movement two types of movement in the earth the first is horizontal movement and second is vertical movement okay these movement now change the paragraph these movements are responsible behind responsible behind the development of different types of relief features on the earth surface such as such as mountains plateaus plains etc okay so endogenic forces are responsible behind two types of movement which type of movement horizontal and vertical horizontal movement will leads to the formation of mountains and vertical movement submergence and emergence these things you all have to keep in mind now look here endogenic forces now types of endogenic forces okay tell me what is geomorphic processes kisko bolte hain yes geomorphic processes are those processes that shape the configuration of the earth surface and this configuration is shaped by the interaction of two forces endogenic and exogenic force so this earth is a dynamic planet and earth crust witness two type of forces these forces are responsible behind physical stress and chemical changes physical stress and chemical changes and this physical stress and chemical changes are responsible behind the change in the configuration of the earth crust theek hai na 
अर्थ क्रस्ट पे बहुत सारी चीजें हैं माउंटेन्स है बिल्डिंग्स माउंटेन इज देयर प्लेट्यू इज देयर ओके एंड दीज आर द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ इंडोजेंटिक फोर्स एंड एट द सेम टाइम एटमोस्फेयर से क्या आता है एक्सो एक्सोजेंटिक फोर्स ये दोनों क्या कर रहे थे इंट्रैक्ट करते हैं और दोनों से ही क्या बनता है हमारा क्रस्ट का डिफरेंट फीचर्स बनकर एक्सोजेंटिक फोर्सेस में क्या क्या इंक्लूड होता है एक्सोजेंटिक फोर्सेस इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहाइंड वेयरिंग डाउन ऑफ वेयरिंग डाउन ऑफ क्रस्टल पार्ट बाय द प्रोसेस ऑफ वेदरिंग व्हाट इज वेदरिंग डिस इंटीग्रेशन एंड डिकम्पोजिशन बोथ ऑफ रॉक वेयर एट इन सी टू जहां है वही आफ्टर वेदरिंग वट विल है ट्रांसपोर्टिंग एजेंट लाइक विंड और यह सब क्या करेगा दैट विल ट्रांसपोर्ट द थिंग विच इज कॉल्ड इरोजन एंड वेन एवर द फोर्स विल स्लो डाउन और एनी डिप्रेस्ड पार्ट विल दे गेट वो क्या कर देंगे वहां और एनी ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन विल टेकिंग प्लेस सो एट दैट एरिया दे विल दैट ट्रांसपोर्टिंग एजेंट विल एजेंट विल क्या करेंगे उसको डिपॉजिट कर देंगे फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ विंड इज कैरिंग डस्ट पार्टिकल्स ओके डस्ट पार्टिकल्स सैंड पार्टिकल्स एंड सडनली अ वेरी बिग ट्रीज comes in the path of wind then what will happen the wind speed will slow down so when wind speed will slow down its carrying capacity will also reduce so the wind will deposit the sand here wo kar dega any doubt now so what is endogen what is geomorphic process is it clear now you can define now tell me what is geomorphic process simple is what the first line is it is the process that shape the configuration of the earth okay configuration of the earth this is the process that shape the configuration of the earth crust okay by the process by the force of endogenic and because these forces are responsible behind physical stress and chemical chemical changes chemical reaction ab 10 tarika se chaho to usko statement ko ye nahi ki whatever i have dictated and you have you all have written in your paper uh, not paper notebook आपको ऐसा लिखने की जरूरत नहीं है यू कैन मेक योर ओन सेंटेंस जियोमोफिक प्रोसेस इज द प्रोसेस दैट चेंजेस द कंफिग्रेशन ऑफ द क्रस्टल पार्ट ऑफ द अर्थ दीज चेंजेस आर एसोसिएटेड विथ एंडोजेनिक एंड एक्सोजेनिक फोर्सेस एंड दीज फोर्सेस आर क्या करते हैं आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहाइंड फिजिकल स्ट्रेस एंड केमिकल चेंजेस आप दस तरीका से लिख सकते हो इसको कोई जरूरी नहीं है कि किसमें क्या लिखें हम जो जो डिक्टेट किया वही आप इसका आंसर लिखें कोई जरूरी नहीं ठीक है नाउ द टाइप्स ऑफ द टाइप्स ऑफ जियो एंड एंडोजेनिक फोर्सेस look there are two types diastrophic force and second is sudden force okay two type of forces and we all know endogenic forces are responsible behind the movement of crustal part in which ways two ways horizontal and 
vertical is it okay now the types of endogenic forces do type ka hota hai first is diastrophic forces kya ho raha hai okay so this is pehle yahan pad lijiye baaki usko dekh lijiyega abhi to naya naya hai to do din dikhne mein maza aayega okay now the first is what diastrophic force and second is sudden force diastrophic force is a very slow force that elevate move the crustal part very slow very slow forces okay so diastrophic forces are those forces which elevate crustal part or move crustal part okay elevate or move crustal part so write down diastrophic forces all forces or processes all forces or processes that move that move elevate e l e elevate or built up or build up build up portion of build up portion of the earth crust earth crust comes under comes under diastrophic forces or processes okay is it clear so any force or any processes which are responsible behind the moving of crustal part or elevating of crustal part or building of crustal part okay because in the definition of the topic processes is what processes is force geo means earth morphic means the specified shape or form and processes means what here processes means forces yani ki the force which are changing the shape of the crustal part of the earth now so diastrophic forces are very slow force and second force is what sudden force the forces which are kya hota hai suddenly comes out from material of the earth and bring changes on the surface of the earth okay for example volcanism earthquake these are the sudden forces okay so write down sudden forces are those forces are those forces which are coming from interior of the earth very fastly and suddenly and responsible behind and responsible behind the change in the configuration of change in the configuration of the crustal part of the earth okay and two forces or processes are comes under sudden forces kon kon sa hai volcanism and earthquake okay now 
so dystrophic forces are those forces which are which are responsible behind moving of crustal part elevating of crustal part or building of crustal part and these all processes are very time taking processes okay so dystrophic forces are very slow for processes act over a large part of area act over large part of area now dystrophic forces are divided into two sub group okay the first is epirogenic e p e r i o g e n i c epirogenic forces okay sorry spelling things likh lijiyega isko so dystrophic force forces or processes both can be used simultaneously hum use kar sakte hain okay the first is it is divided into two parts okay e p e i r o g e n i c epigenic forces or processes and the second is orogenic oro genic forces or processes okay now i'm i want to repeat something what are the forces acting on the earth crust what are the different type of forces endogenic and exogenic endogenic forces are the crustal building force and uh, exogenic forces are the crustal wearing forces wearing force okay and the interaction of these forces are responsible behind the change in the crustal part okay now what are the sources of endogenic forces energy coming from the inside earth and what is the source of from where the energy is coming from radioactivity second is rotational and tidal frictional and third is primordial heat is it clear now and what is the source of uh, exogenic forces sun okay sun energy are responsible and exogenic processes are involving weathering erosion transportation and deposition of materials theek hai na now endogenic forces are grouped in how many categories two categories the first is dystrophic forces or processes and second is sudden what is dystrophic force or processes that process which are very slow and responsible behind movement of crustal part elevation of crustal part or building building up of crustal part getting my points now dystrophic forces are responsible behind movement because the forces are responsible behind movement now dystrophic forces are grouped in it is divided into two parts means there are two groups of that dystrophic force the first is epirogenic forces or this forces is also known as continent building force kya kehte hain isko hum log continental or continent building force epirogenic forces or processes is also known as continental building forces or processes okay 
second is what orogenic orogenic forces are also known as mountain building forces or processes this is mountain building forces or processes i hope it is clear okay now we all know these forces are responsible behind movement horizontal or vertical so this apergenic process is responsible behind vertical or horizontal movement yes horizontal mein to mountain banega abhi to samjhaya okay getting my points or not so apergenic forces are responsible behind the horizontal movement and orogenic forces are responsible behind sorry this is vertical and this is horizontal theek hai na any doubt now so look here so endogenic forces are grouped into categories okay kon kon si hai number 1 is diastropic diastropic forces or processes and second is sudden forces or processes now diastropic forces or processes is grouped in two categories first is apergenic the okay e p e i apergenic uh, apergenic forces or processes and second is orogenic okay now ab look here this is orogenic forces okay sudden forces is what volcanism and and earthquake yahi do sudden hai okay theek hai na ab yahan dhyan dijiyega aap log now orogenic forces kya hai diastropic okay diastropic mein kya kya hai okay and second is orogenic now this orogenic forces ye do type ke first is tensional force and second is kaun sa hoga tensional force and bataiye abhi bataya tha compressional force this is compressional forces okay compressional force now compressional force tensional force and compressional force now tensional force what tensional force will do it will crack okay it will what responsible behind cracking and faulting faulting and what is compressional uh 
फोर्स विल डू सो इट विल वट इट विल डू इट विल बेंड द क्या करेगा क्रस्ट पार्ट इट विल इट इज अ क्रस्टल बेंडिंग फोर्स बेंडिंग फोर्स ओके दिस इज टेंसल फोर्स इज क्रस्टनल फ्रैक्चरिंग फोर्स क्रस्टल क्रस्टल फ्रैक्चरिंग फ्रैक्चरिंग फोर्स ये फ्रैक्चर करेगा और ये क्या करेगा क्रस्टल को बैंड करेगा ओके दिस विल डू कंप्रेशनल फोर्स इज क्रस्टल बैंडिंग फोर्स बैंडिंग बी एन डी आई एन जी क्रस्टल बैंडिंग ओके सपोज this is crustal part if compressional force will applied then what will happen it will bend the crustal part it will bend the crustal part okay now and when tensile force is applied then it will create a cracks okay create cracks or fault okay cracking this is what the fracturing force fracturing force means it will create a fracture in the crustal part and what is compressional force compressional force is the force that will bend the crustal part so orogenic force is a part of dystrophic force orogenic force is mountain building force aerogenic force is continent building force dystrophic force is what is dystrophic force dystrophic force is an example of which force endogenic force endogenic force is divided into two parts dystrophic force and sudden force dystrophic force is a very slow force and responsible behind the elevation movement and building of crustal part now the dystrophic force is divided into how many groups two parts two forces the first is what aerogenic force and second is orogenic force aerogenic force is continental building force it always responsible behind the vertical movement vertical movement orogenic force is mountain building force. and its effect is what it will responsible behind the horizontal movement and horizontal movement can be of two types first is tensile or tensional force tensional force is the force which are responsible behind the fracturing of the crustal part and fracturing can takes place in two ways number 1 is cracking and the second is faulting compressional force is is also called crustal bending force okay and crustal bend bending can takes place in two ways either like this this is called folding okay and this is in large scale large area but less height this is called warping this is called warping orogenic process is what force is mountain building and orogenic force is are grouped in two categories first is first is tensional force tensional force kya karega cracking in the uh, 
क्रस्टल पार्ट क्रैक करेगा क्रैकिंग से क्या होगा फॉल्ट ओके फॉल्ट विल क्रिएट एंड सेकेंड इज कौन सा है कंप्रेशनल फोर्स कंप्रेशनल फोर्स विल रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहाइंड वार्पिंग फोल्डिंग इन अ लार्ज एरिया बट स्मॉलर इन हाइट दैट इज कॉल्ड वार्पिंग बहुत बड़ा एरिया में क्या है फोल्डिंग हो रहा है बट द हाइट ऑफ फोल्ड इज very less and second is what folding folding when crustal part is bending in a smaller area with greater height that is called folding clear ho gaya any doubt puchu Endogenic forces are grouped in how many categories? What is the name? Diastrophic and sudden forces. Diastrophic force are which type of force? Slow forces. And what is the function? They elevate, move, or help in crustal building. तीन ही काम करेगा ना? Diastrophic force will responsible behind the movement of the crustal part, or elevation of the elevate elevate the crustal part, and the third is building up of crustal part. Okay, and how many part it is divided? Two parts. Kon kon sa? Aerogenic forces and what is aerogenic force? Continent building force. and what is an continental building force means aerogenic force will always responsible behind which type of movement vertical movement this all things you have to keep in mind for a preliminary examination now orogenic force is called mountain building okay what will be the movement horizontal and which type of forces are generated by this tensional force tensional force will क्या करेगा ये फ्रैक्चर इन द अर्थ क्रस्ट फ्रैक्चर फ्रैक्चर मींस क्रैक इधर इट विल रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहाइंड द क्रैकिंग और फॉल्टिंग एंड सेकेंड इज कंप्रेशनल फोर्स क्या करेगा ये वार्पिंग व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ वार्पिंग बेंडिंग इन द लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ एरिया विथ स्मॉलर इन हाइट विथ लेस हाइट एंड सेकेंड इज फोल्डिंग फोल्डिंग रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहाइंड द बिल्डिंग ऑफ फोल्ड माउंटेन स्मॉल एरिया लार्जर एलिवेशन याद हो गया सारा दिस इज ओनली फॉर योर प्री एग्जामिनेशन एंड गो एंड सी द क्वेश्चन ऑफ प्रीवियस ईयर पूछा है वट इज द सोर्स ऑफ एंडोजेंटिक फोर्स सोर्सेज आर वट आर द सोर्स ऑफ एंडोजेंटिक फोर्स रेडियो एक्टिविटी यस दिस इज द क्वेश्चन यस पूछा है पिछले बार and this topic is not for your mains it is for pre but weathering mass movement upsc can ask in mains also to so, isko hum alag se padhenge theek hai isko hum log kya karenge we will discuss in detail in the next class abhi samay hai ha huh? चलिए तो ये पूरा हम लोगों ने कंप्लीट कर लिया हाँ इसमें तो इसका है और कौन सा एक्सोजेनेटिक फोर्सेस अलग से है वो एक्सोजेनेटिक फोर्सेस इज व्हाट द फोर्सेस व्हिच इज कमिंग फ्रॉम मींस द सोर्स ऑफ दैट इज सन एंड एक्सोजेनेटिक फोर्सेस आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहाइंड द वियरिंग डाउन ऑफ material crustal part wearing yes weathering because it is uh 
that uh, external forces or exogenic forces are responsible behind the breaking of rocks or ye sab cheeze so weathering erosion transportation and deposition these all are comes under the process called denudation okay uska part hai ye now write down two or three points diastropic forces and movement diastropic forces and movement diastropic forces are divided into two forces and movement the first is aperogenetic movement aperogenetic force or and movement and second is orogenetic force and movement theek hai now make a distinction dono mein alag kar lijiye is tarah here is what aperogenic force or processes and movement sorry force and movement and here is oro genic force and movement now write down aperogenic has been derived from two words first is apero e p e i r o s e p e p e i e i r o s aperos means continent and genic genesis means genesis genesis means origin okay second point it is a continent building force continent building force and movement continent building force and movement next point apero genetic movement apero genetic movement causes upliftment and causes upliftment and subsidence of continental masses through upward and downward movement respectively okay next point since aperogenic movement is associated with upward and downward movement hence it is responsible for vertical movement vertical movement now here is upward and here is downward upward movement and downward movement okay upward movement and downward movement upward movement causes upliftment of 
upliftment of continental masses in two ways. Two ways. Number one, upliftment of whole continent, upliftment of whole continent or a part of thereof, a part of continent. Okay, and second, upliftment of coastal land, the first point kya tha, upliftment of whole continent or a part of continent and second is upliftment of coastal land, upliftment of coastal land of the continent. Such type of upliftment is called क्या कहते हैं इसको एमरजेंस दिस इज कॉल्ड एमरजेंस एंड द कोस्ट इज कॉल्ड एमरजेंट कोस्ट एमरजेंट कोस्ट अपवर्ड मूवमेंट क्या करता है इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहाइंड either the upliftment of entire continent or part of continent and second if upliftment is taking place in the coastal region that is called emergence and the coast is called emergent coast which coastal part of india is the emergent coast eastern or western eastern part and this is the reason this is the reason natural ports are absent on the eastern coast and one important discussion i have made in uh, that uh, oceanography since it is an emergent coast that's why the continental margin is Large, this is the diagram. Yaha kya hai? Narrow, and here is what? UPSC has asked this question. We have discussed about that. We have written in detail. The generally kya hai? On the mouth of rivers, on the mouth of river, the continental coast is large, means very wide. But eastern coastal eastern means the continental margin of india in the bay of bengal is very narrow continental margin of bay of bengal is very narrow and it is wide in bay of uh, arabian sea in spite of presence of large number of river because at the mouth of river continental margin is very wide generally it is found very wide but here kya ho raha hai it is narrow and the reason is what is the reason it is a emergent coast acha emerge jagah to kya hoga comes out from the ocean it will comes out emergent coast will comes out from the ocean so when it comes out the ocean it will be the part of continent it will not the part of oceanic area oceanic water will not in that part वहां ओशनिक वाटर तो होगा ही नहीं ठीक है नाउ सेकेंड इज वर्ड डाउन वर्ड राइट डाउन द डाउनवर्ड मूवमेंट कॉजेज सब्सिडेंस इन द कॉन्टिनेंटल मासेस डाउनवर्ड मूवमेंट डाउनवर्ड मूवमेंट कॉजेज subsidence 
of continental masses in two ways number 1 ओके नंबर वन इंटायर क्या है द होल कॉन्टिनेंट और अ पार्ट ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंट सबडक्शन ऑफ और सब्सिडेंस ऑफ सब्सिडेंस ऑफ होल कॉन्टिनेंट और पार्ट ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंट एंड सेकेंड द सब्सिस्टेंस ऑफ सब्सिस्टेंस ऑफ कोस्टल लैंड ओके सब्सिडेंस ऑफ कोस्टल लैंड ओके एंड द सब्सिडेंस ऑफ कोस्टल लैंड इज कॉल्ड सबमर्जेंस सब मर्जेंस एंड द कोस्ट इज कॉल्ड सबमर्जेंट कोस्ट सबमर्जेंट कोस्ट लुक हियर दिस पार्ट दिस कोस्ट इज emergent coast emergent coast this part is submergent coast on submergent coast large number of natural ports are found because submergent coast provide favorable condition but this part is emergent coast okay comes out from the oceanic water so on this area on emergent coast natural ports are generally absent and this is the reason the this part of western part of western flank of india okay western peninsular flank coast is submergent coast and submergent coast provide ideal condition for the development of natural ports ports can built at any coastal in any coastal areas but natural facilities are available here because submergent coast are highly kya hote hain indented in den ted means zigzag form but emergent coast us tarah ka nahi hota theek hai emergent coast is entirely different emergent coast pe aapko kya nahi milte natural ports are generally absent the submergent coast are indented coast मीन्स दे आर नॉट इन स्ट्रेट लाइन क्या होते हैं ये कटे छटे होते ठीक है ओके सो टुमोरो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द Uh, that uh, orogenic force which are kaun se force hai mountain building force and mountain building force are because of which type of movement horizontal these points these the these points you all have to keep in mind 